We are here today uh, with the Council General of Canada, Mr. Roy Norton, or Dr. Roy Norton, and um, so we'd like to ask uh, Mr. Norton some questions with respect to the new international trade crossing. So before we begin about that, uh, could you give us a little bit about your background? Good to be with you, Mr. Oveda. I'm uh, here as our Consul General to Michigan, Ohio, Indiana, and Kentucky. Canada has had a consulate in Detroit since 1948. Even though we're right across the river, we make the investment because this territory is so terribly important to us. I came here from Washington, D.C., where I was one of the senior folks at our embassy for four years prior to coming here, and I had a previous posting in Washington, but I've also worked in the Ontario Public Service, running our export agency and our international relations and protocol. I've been a consultant. I've been in the private sector. It, it, it's a reasonably colorful background, one that uh, I hope allows me to understand and identify with an awful lot of, uh, of business people in your community. Well, thank you very much. We'd like to get the, the Canadian government's point of view with respect to the new international trade crossing. There's a lot of information that we get certainly in the United States. Um, some of it is accurate, some of it is, is not. It's all been very confusing. So, you know, from your perspective, could you offer a point of view? Sure. I think, in honesty, it's only been confusing because the owners of the Ambassador Bridge have wanted it to be confusing. They somehow think that serves uh, their purposes. This project is Canada's number one national infrastructure priority, and it has been for some time. A quarter of all U.S.-Canada trade crosses the border at Detroit, and the Great Lakes, the geography of the Great Lakes is such, and the concentrations of population and of manufacturing, especially in the automotive industry, are such that there aren't a lot of alternative potential crossing points. Detroit is it. Detroit's at the center of the North American industrial heartland, and a quarter of all of our trade with the United States crosses this bridge. Forty-three percent crosses between Michigan and Canada, uh, between uh, the United States and Canada at Michigan. That's how central and important Michigan is. So having reliable transportation capacity is pretty important to Canada, and frankly, we think it should be to Michigan as well. The states of Ohio and Indiana and Kentucky have interestingly all endorsed the new international trade crossing because they think it's important for them. There were no television advertisements run in those states, which may explain why they're uh, on side and why they were able to be objective. So we decided that there seemed to be two alternatives, do nothing or pay for the bridge. And we didn't particularly want to pay for it. The arrangement that we normally would enter into with a state on the receiving end of a bridge is that there'd be shared responsibility. But such a consistent effort has been made by the owners of the Ambassador Bridge over so many years, literally to poison the environment among decision makers, that it became clear that Michigan couldn't pay. And so we decided to step up and offer to pay for the entire cost or a backstop uh, all liability so that the state of Michigan literally will face no cost and no liability. And when the bridge is paid for from toll revenues, and everybody's accustomed to paying tolls to cross an international bridge, after 50 years on a bridge that's built to last 125 years, Michigan will receive about $50 million per year that dollar value actually will inflate over time because that's in today's dollars and that money will come literally for free in the sense that Michigan put no money down and faced no liability. Uh, we'll get 50 million dollars as well and that will be a revenue stream that will be quite useful to both governments. It's the opposite of what it is the television commercials say but again uh, the authors, the payers of the television commercials are a special interest who are trying to stop this project from happening because they have a monopoly and they want to preserve their monopoly. So we've uh, found a partner in the governor of Michigan and in the business community in Michigan. Your chamber uh, has been uh, forefront now for a couple of years in supporting it. The Detroit Regional Chamber, the Michigan Chamber of Commerce, chambers in just about every city of any size in this state big, iconic Michigan companies, the Detroit Three automotive uh, assemblers, Honda and Toyota, 
an awful lot of major parts uh, suppliers as well uh, have endorsed the bridge, and so and so have all of the major labor unions that will build the bridge. So we're pretty confident that there's overwhelming public support for the project. I heard you say, and, and this is one of the questions that seems to be coming up, that uh, that we need more capacity, more transportation capacity across borders. I mean, there's the Blue Water Bridge, there's the tunnel, there's the Ambassador Bridge. Uh, the Maroon family has offered to upgrade the bridge. Uh, but what I hear you saying is that that's not sufficient. Well, there are two things there. First off, the tunnel can't accommodate uh, truck traffic. Uh, Blue Water is 60 miles north. Most firms, especially in the automotive sector, operate on a just-in-time delivery model, whereby Chrysler, for example, that sends 1,200 trucks a day across the Ambassador Bridge, uh, more than 400,000 a year, has a four-hour just-in-time delivery model between their Windsor plant and Jefferson North or Auburn uh, 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 Hills or Sterling Heights. They can't go to uh, Sarnia, Port Huron, 60 miles north, but that bridge is already at capacity. And likely, if there were to be a problem at the Ambassador Bridge, traffic would have to go 350 miles east to Buffalo and 350 miles back. The model becomes unsustainable. There are more bridges in the Niagara Peninsula than there are in Michigan, and they collectively carry significantly less traffic than the Michigan ones do. But they provide redundancy, call that insurance, in the event of any disruption at a bridge. They're all profitable, by the way. They're all publicly owned and they're all profitable. And there's actually negotiation underway to build a fifth bridge in the Niagara Peninsula. Our principal worry, we think there's going to be traffic growth over time. We have a lot of faith in this regional economy. We think it's coming back very nicely, especially in the automotive sector. We have more confidence in the economy, I think, than what the Maroons do. They tend to talk it down. They tend to say there's not going to be any growth. There's no need for new capacity. There's going to be 100 million more people in the United States and Canada, to say nothing of Mexico, um, in, uh, in 20 years' time than what there are now. That many more people will generate that much more traffic. But our real worry is that the Ambassador Bridge is 83 years old. It was built in an era when bridges were built to last for 50 years. We have no idea how long it's going to last. We pray that it's not going to fall down tomorrow. We have no reason to believe that it will. But it would be catastrophic to this region if it were no longer functional and there was no alternative in place, which is why I said earlier we felt that there were two choices, doing nothing, which we find to be entirely too risky for the regional economy or paying for it ourselves. And so we decided that faced with those two choices, uh, doing nothing was totally unacceptable. The governor of Michigan felt likewise. The chambers who support it feel likewise. And so that's the path that we've decided to go on. You asked about the Maroons and the possibility of upgrading their bridge. There are a number of issues there. They don't own the land on the Detroit side that they would require to twin. The city of Windsor would have to close parts of three city streets, and they adamantly refuse to do so, because right now those 8,000 trucks that come across the bridge dump onto a city street, Huron Church Road, and they go through 18 traffic lights over the course of seven miles before they connect to freeway. You can travel from the, as a trucker, from the Texas-Mexico border to Montreal, and you encounter 18 traffic lights, all in the city of Windsor. This is untenable. It's environmentally not a good thing, and so uh, it's inefficient. And so um, dumping more traffic, which is what twinning would do, into that same congested plaza, particularly on the Canadian side, and then having all of that additional traffic uh, join all of the existing 8,000 trucks per day that travel here on Church Road is entirely unattractive to the people of Windsor. So they won't close the city streets. The new international trade crossing has all of the environmental approvals it requires. Twinning has none. In fact, when twinning was tested in the middle part of the last decade, it failed. And so it's totally irresponsible of the Maroons to imply that twinning is a legitimate option. There are two options, I repeat, doing nothing or proceeding with the new international trade crossing. You spoke of the 
commitments that the Canadian government was making. And it seemed quite one-sided. So there's clearly some motivation for having this bridge. Well, the motivation, again, is insurance against calamity. We would have preferred that Michigan... We have to go out and borrow $600, $550, $600 million, which we will spend for the interchange connection to I-75 on the Michigan side. And you know the governor has worked out a marvelous arrangement with the U.S. Federal Highway Administration, whereby even though our $550 million for the construction on the U.S. side never flows into Michigan's books, Michigan nonetheless gets to be able to count that money as its share in a four-to-one match with the U.S. federal government, meaning it will elicit $2.2 billion for Michigan in road and bridge construction funds for use anywhere in the state with nothing, nothing to do with the bridge itself. And so the bridge on the Michigan side alone will create 10,000 direct jobs for the four to five year period of construction. It will create something in the order of 13,000 indirect jobs. Then you have all the jobs associated with the, the construction of roads and bridges elsewhere in the state using this 2.2 billion. And then you have the enhanced investment climate that associates with the fact that companies whose business plans depend on moving things back and forth to Canada will know that there's reliable transportation capacity going forward. What Michigan, frankly, should be worried about, and certainly what they're worried about in southwestern Ontario, is that companies won't locate here or they won't expand their operations here because if they depend on being able to move things back or forth, back and forth, and there's an 83-year-old bridge in view and a 93-year-old bridge and a 103-year-old bridge, and they don't know how long it will last for, they'll locate elsewhere. They'll go and locate in northern New York and in the Niagara Peninsula of Canada. And actually, that won't hurt Ontario. The tax revenue would continue to come to Ontario. It would devastate southwestern Ontario. But it wouldn't come to Michigan. It would go to northern New York State. And so that's why enlightened Michiganders, uh, including your chamber, say... Let's make sure that we support a project that's going to help the people and businesses in Michigan and in this region, as well, of course, as in Canada. Council, uh, this has been extremely informative. We genuinely appreciate your time. Uh, we hear the passion. Uh, we hear the rationale. We hear the amazing commitments that the Canadian government is making, and it has a very strong business rationale for doing this. So thank you very much for your time, and uh, please know that we are continuing to encourage our membership to spread the word uh, to vote no on Proposition 6. Well, thank you, Mr. Ojeda. I hope that all of the 400,000 members of the Hispanic community in Michigan uh, get the message and appreciate that this is a project that will not cost them anything and from which there are only benefits and the way to ensure that they achieve it is to defeat Proposal 6 on November the 6th. Thank Good to you. be with you. Good to be with you. Thank you. We've been speaking with Dr. Roy Norton, the Council General of the Government of Canada. Uh, this is Armando Ojeda, the Executive Director of the Michigan Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Uh, we'd like to encourage you uh, to vote no on Proposition 6 uh, this coming uh, election uh, for the purposes, for the reasons that were uh, previously mentioned. Um, and we believe that uh, voting no on Proposition 6 will be a vote for Hispanic-owned businesses in the state of Michigan and for improved commerce uh, and economic development in our state.